Hello everyone, it is Shazwam and I'm here to bring you guys the 3.10 or 3.10 patch notes have you want to view it for League of Legends. These were uploaded about 45 minutes to an hour ago at the time of recording this. And I thought I would just give you guys, you know, a quick heads up on what's going to be happening. We're just going to go from top to bottom and I'll give you guys my thoughts on what I feel, you know, had to be done or if I like a change, stuff like that. Let's jump right into things. Champions. Ash. Summary, we... While clearing up Ash's passive, we found a small bug that granted that had been granting unwarranted focus stacks. We ordered an orbital strike on the bug and gave focus a minor buff to compensate. Focus. Focus stacks per second increased to 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 from 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And fix a bug where focus was granting stacks while on cooldown in certain situations. Overall, this sounds just like, a, again, a minor buff that she kind of needed. You know, a lot of people saying, oh, you know, Ash sucks, why would you ever pick her? Well, there are several different reasons. One of them being that she has a high crit tolerance, or she has a high crit potential, rather. Not tolerance, she has high crit potential, especially with focus. So, I'm glad they changed that, and you know, I'm glad that they found the bug and took it away. You know, enough said. Elise. Spiderlings are now less tanky overall, particularly against champions who build armor penetration. Spiderlings will also descend from repel after at least, meaning if she repels with tower aggro and no friendly minions around, she will be targeted first when she lands. The towers used to target spiderlings first because they would descend first. Repel also no longer allows Elise to travel outside of the indicated range. Thank you! Big bear bug I have with that. You would always see Elise, like, you know, let's say, you know, for instance, her, you know, her, the circle for her repel, you know, was this. She would be able to go over here, outside of the circle, and descend upon somebody else that's outside of that area. Glad they fixed that. Uh, context. Elise has been a high-value pick in competitive play for some, uh, for some time thanks to the overall strength of her kit. We considered reducing the damage of some of her abilities, but we felt like we should target her more frustrating aspects first. Specifically, we wanted to reduce the tankiness of Elise's spiderlings and lower their utility as damage sponges. With these changes, we can add a little more counterplay for her opponents, meaning Elise players will now will need to think more carefully about her Spider Swarm passive. The other ability we targeted was the deceptively long range of Repel. We initially designed Elise's Repel to allow for some extra travel space outside of her indicated range, but in retrospect, this made the skill extremely frustrating to players or to play against. These changes mean yeah, these changes mean the circular vision indicator will more accurately show who Elise will be able to descend upon. Again, thank you. Like I understand yeah, give like a five, ten yard leeway, but not like thirty yards where it was. You know, to where you were still able to get hit. Pretty much it was the length of another skill shot, which that is Insane. Glad that they fixed that. Spiderlings. Health has been or health reduced to 90 through 260 from 125 through 550. Armor increased to 30, 50, 70, 90 from 30 base on spider form rank. Magic resist increased to 50, 70, 90, 110 from 50 based on spider form rank. Multi-target damage reduction adjusted to 25% from 10, 20, 30, 40. Spiderlings no longer continue taking action before vanishing after once Elise shifts into human form, and spiderlings no longer or spiderlings now group closer together while moving. Again, that just means that the spiderlings have less health, but they have more armor, more magic resist. But in general, they're easier to, they're just as hard to kill, but if you have magic penetration, armor penetration, they should be 
easier to kill, so it gives you some leeway there. Volatile spider or er, spiderling movement speed has been reduced. All right. <laughs> Repel. Elise can no longer descend outside the indicated area. Fix a bug where Elise could begin casting spells and attacking as soon as she be began her descent while she was untargetable. And Spiderlings now descend from Repel slightly after Elise instead of descending at the same time. Again, thank you for fixing that. That was my biggest bugbear with Elise. Biggest one. Would see her like pop up into Repel, show up 30 to 40 yards past where the circle indicated. Thank you for fixing that. Fiddlesticks. Crowstorm. No longer reduces Baron Nashar's dragons or, dragons or Vile Maw's magic resistance. Alright, that's good. Means you actually have to get more magic resist to, or not more magic resist, more magic damage, like more AP or more, you know, magic pen to do the same amount of damage to them. Because, let's be honest here, that was kind of, you know, kind of stupid. Well, again, that's, I believe, his ultimate, so, eh, whatever. Fizz. Playful slash trickster. Fix a bug that occasionally caused rapid casters to deal no damage. Thank you. <laughs> he was a pain to deal with when I was Karthus. Thank you. <laughs> uh... Karthus, speaking of, Lay Waste, now cast at max range when targeted beyond max range during death, or death defied. Defile, AP ratio reduced to 0.2 from 0.25, and fix bug where cooldown reduction allowed Defile to, rapidly to, uh, to be rapidly toggled, increasing its damage output. Alright, I'll take those. You know, Defile, it... I'm not gonna lie, people still die in Defile. They still will. I don't know how, I don't know why, but they will still stand in Defile. Biggest thing to remember when you're going up against Karthus. Don't stand in the Defile! I understand it's hard to get out of Defile sometimes, but if you can help it, GTFO! Easy enough. Malzahar. Call of the Void. Missile visibility from the Fog of War and Brush now consistent with other missiles. And summon Voidling. Voidlings no longer repeatedly or repeatedly switch targets with more than one unit, or when more than one unit is affected with malefic vision. And you know, whatever that good. Those Voidlings were stupid. Glad they you know upgraded the AI for that. Master Yi remake summary. Master Yi has been reworked with a new model and changes to his kit. For a full rundown, click on. The Master Yi changes here. I'll go ahead and put an annotation in the top right hand side so that you guys can go ahead and click on that. Go ahead, it'll you know go ahead, pause this video, click on the annotation, and you'll see the you know few minute video I did for the Master Yi re uh, rework. Shows you everything broken down. But anyway, let's jump right into things here. General health per level increased to 92 from 86. Base mana reduced to 180 from 199. Mana per level increased to 42 from 36. Base armor reduced to 15 from 16.3. Armor per level reduced to 3 from 3.7. And tax speed per level reduced to 2.75 from 2.98%. Overall means he has more health, you know, for, at the he has more health per level, he gets more mana per level, but he has less mana at level 1. And he's a little less tankier than he previously was, just to start off with. But he'll still be just as good if you get the same items. Double Strike. Every fourth consecutive basic attack, Master Yi will attack twice, dealing 50% damage on the second strike. Alpha Strike. Master Yi becomes untargetable and dashes up to four times, dealing 20, or 25, 60, 95, 135, 165 plus 1.0 total attack damage, physical damage to and 75, 100, 125, 150, 175 bonus damage to minions. Alpha Strike can critically strike for 60% of Master Yi's total AD. 
Elvis Strix cooldown is reduced by one second for each time Master Yi basic attacks. Mana cost is now 70, 80, 90, 100, 110. So right there for Alpha Strike, it now scales off of AD instead of AP, and it does static damage to minions. That's that's all it's saying, and it has a chance to crit, so that's gonna, you know that's nice. Meditate, Master Yi channels for four seconds, gaining 40, 45, 50, 55, 60 percent damage reduction, and healing for 30, 50, 70, 90, 110. Plus 0.3 AP per second. Er, and this heal is increased by 1% for every 1% health Master Yi is missing. The damage reduction is halved against turrets. M mana cost is now 50, 65, 80, 95, 110. And cooldown is 35 seconds. Oh, I'm sorry, the cooldown for uh, Alpha Strike is 18, six, er, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. So, Meditate, it's... Now better to use it when you're at lower health, so that you get the most benefit from it. It scales very, very poorly with AP. You'll still be seeing some people try to go the AP build, and you'll be like, lol, 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 you can't kill me with Meditate, but they'll be meditating with full health, and it'll be stupid, and they'll die in like a second and a half. So, glad about that. Wuju style. Passive. Master Yi gains 7, 9, 11, 13, 15% attack damage. Active. Master Yi deals 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, plus 0 0.1, 0 0.125, 0 0.150, 0 0.175, and 0 0.2 total attack, or yeah, total attack damage as true damage for on hit for 5 seconds. Wuju Style's passive bonus is lost while the skill is on cooldown. Mana cost is 0, the cooldown is 18, 17, 16, 15, 14 at their respective ranks. Highlander, passive, when Master Yi kills a champion, the, base, the cooldown on his basic attack or basic abilities are reduced by 18 seconds, half, you know, in half for assists, so 6 seconds, no, 9 seconds for assists, full 18 seconds for kills. So meaning, if you get a kill with level one, you know, and you only have level one alpha strike, boom! Right there's your alpha strike back again. But I don't know why you would have alpha strike level one by level six. Doesn't seem, you know, doesn't seem smart. Active, grants mastery 30, 55, 80 percent attack speed and 25, 35, 45 percent movement speed for 10 seconds. If mastery scores a kill or assist while Highlander is active. The duration is extended by 4 seconds. Mana cost is 100, cooldown is 75 seconds. That's at all levels. So, in general, I, I love, love the new ADE. This is literally ADE now. You will not be seeing people go AP unless they don't realize that they actually changed him. And then people will be like, oh, I suck now as APE, and they'll have to go with something else. So... Yeah, I can't wait to see how high I can get crits on as AD Yi. And I can't wait to see people try and do that as middle Yi AD. But anyway, let's move on. Nami. Aqua Prison. Fix a bug where the stun sometimes lasted longer than intended. Alright, good that they changed that. It was a night you know, well needed bug change. Poppy. Hero Charge. Fix a bug where Poppy would retain her previous move or attack order after charging, and fix the bug that caused Poppy to stutter briefly after charging. I'm glad they fixed those, you know, bugs, because let's be honest here, Rogue Charge was kind of a wonky ability. You know, yeah, you can go ahead and, you know, charge somebody into a wall, but the, you know, it, it was just broken, kind of. So I'm glad they changed that, because you can see Poppy ram somebody into a wall and just instantly two-shot them with her Q, I believe it was. Whichever ability was that, you know, it was like Nasus's Q where it did a ton of damage on your next hit. Yeah, glad they changed that. Rise. Summary. The range of Rise's spells are being reduced this patch, but his desperate... Power movement speed buff has been increased to compensate. 
context. With this spell range and high late game damage, Rise could effectively nuke back lane squishies, or effectively nuke back line. Uh, Rise could effect effectively nuke back line squishies from distances while still playing the role of tanky beast. While built in that way, that is. We wanted to redu uh, refocus on Rise's core identity as a mid-ranged mage, meaning his positioning and proximity to the enemy or proximity to the enemy, enemy team is more important than before. While his increased attack speed or his increased speed should allow him to get up close to portray you know or too close uh, should allow him to get up close to priority targets to melt their delicate little faces. Overload. Cast range reduced to 600 from 650. Rune Prison. Cast range reduced to 600 from 625. Mana cost reduced to 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 from 80, 90, 100, 110, 120 at their respective levels. Spell Flux. Cast range now 600 from 675. And Desperate Power. Movements being increased to 60, 70, 80 from 35, 45, 55. So again, they reduced the cast range on all of his abilities. They did reduce the amount of cost of Rune Prison, so I'm glad about that. But, you know, the, you know, compensation with Desperate Power, giving him that extra movement speed, that'll, hopefully that'll help him get, again, up close and personal with those targets, so he can go ahead and get all of his burst out, you know, a nice short burst, obviously, and, you know, if they decide to try and run, he can go ahead and, you know, continue fling spells at them while pursuing them, because his desperate power will still be active and he'll still gain that movement speed boost. We'll have to see how this, you know, affects his gameplay, both in the pro level and just low level pro uh, play. Thresh, summary: Thresh, uh, Thresh's reduced base health and armor make him more vulnerable at early er, uh, at early levels but collecting souls now grant a flat bonus with no diminishing returns. Context. We wanted to make trading in lanes a little riskier for Thresh, as he had a lot of crowd control through death, sentence, and flight. Additionally, collecting souls were a vital part of early game Thresh play, and had the tendency to become negligible late game due to their diminishing returns. Giving souls a flat bonus means Thresh's passive stays relevant throughout the game. General, his base health has been reduced to 500 from 541, and his base armor from 12, or er, reduced to 12 from 18. So, you know, as somebody who's played Thresh often, I'm okay with that change. I honestly am. It was, you know, he was pretty tanky just in general, but, you know, let's, let's just read a little more. Damnation, which is his passive, souls now always grant 0.75 armor and ability power instead of starting at 1.0 and granting diminishing returns per soul collected. So, this means that if you have, let's say, 100 souls, that's 75 armor, 75 AP, you've just gotten for free for doing your job. You know, instead of, you know, it being oh, about 68 or so. So overall, early game it won't seem like it'll like it's helping all that much, but as the game goes on, you get more and more souls. The armor reduction becomes negligible, as well as the health reduction, because you'll be getting that health anyway from items and just from in general being with your team. Again, items like Aegis of the Legion or Ronic Bulwark, uh, Kindle Gem or not Kindle Gem, uh, Ruby Sightstone. You know, all of those generic support items that you generally see on a support. Either way, he's still going to be tanky. He's still going to be a nuisance to deal with. But he just has a little less base health and a little less base armor for the early game. Late game, it shouldn't play that much of a difference either way. Because he'll be just as tanky. Twisted Fate. Summary. Loaded Dice no longer grants global bonus gold, but instead gives Twisted Fate between 1 and 6 gold gold per kill. Pick a card has been changed to giving TF players a smaller window to throw the card after locking it instead of a long 
instead of one long window to lock both and throw the card. Context: Loaded Dice was giving Twisted Fate and his team a lot of hidden power without feeling individually impactful. The change fits more thematically with his kit and allows him and allows his passive to feel more noticeable by giving TF more gold on average over the course of the match. The pick a card changes are intended to introduce more counterplay to the ability as many players were locking in their card with a second or two of shuffling. Then sitting on the locked card for the rest of the duration to intimidate opponents. While these uh, while these changes mean TF players have more time to utilize pick a card, they have a smaller window to act once they are locked in on a card. Loaded dice, the remade version. This is his passive. Upon killing a unit, Twisted Fate rolls a dice, getting anywhere between one to six bonus gold. Naturally, Twisted Fate has a higher chance to receive a larger bonus. Pick a card. Now has 8 seconds to lock and 4 seconds to throw the card instead of 10 seconds to do both. Again, makes sense. He's all about lock, you know, he's constantly kind of saying luck of the cards, stuff like that. So this just helps with his overall kit. Udir. Spirit Guard Udir now has new death animation. All right. <laughs> All right. That's fine. Whatever. Vain. Condemn. Fix a bug where the cast range was longer than intended. 650 instead of 550. And final hour. Increase or cooldown increased to 185 70 from 70 seconds. For those of you that weren't aware, that was her ultimate, and I'm glad they fixed that as well. You know, Honestly, early levels, she shouldn't be spamming it all that much anyway. So the 30 second, again, 30 second nerf, first level, that's completely fine. And the condemned cast range, that that actually makes sense to change that. Because why would you have a cast range on something that you can't, like, why make the cast range of one of your abilities, you know, further than how far you can shoot? Vayne has a very, very, very small attack range. She actually has, I believe, the second lowest, un or just ahead of Teemo, as far as, you know, just attack goes, like how far she can attack and stuff, so, again, glad they fixed that, and my god, the train's here, loud. But yeah, glad they fixed that, that means she has to actually get, again, up close and personal with her opponents, knock them into a wall, stuff like that, and she'll still be in attack range, even after she's, you know, hit condemn. So, glad about that. Warwick. Infinite Duress. Fix a bug where damage would continue to be dealt after being interrupted by enemy champions. Alright, good that that bug is fixed. Because that was a lot of unneeded damage coming out after you've, you know, even while you CC'd him during his ultimate, you know, people were still getting damaged and being locked down. Good. Again, glad they fixed that. Zack. Elastic Slingshot. Damage reduced to 80, 120, 160, 200, 240 from 80, 130, 180, 230, 280. So overall, you know, first level, no nerf. Second level, 10 damage nerf. Uh, third level, what is it? 30 damage nerf. Fourth, no, third level, yeah, it's a 30 damage nerf. Unless I'm doing my math wrong there. No, I'm sorry, it's a 20 damage nerf. Fourth level, it's a 30 damage nerf. You know, last level, it's a, you know, 50 damage nerf. So, eh, early game will still hit just as hard, but late game, it won't hit as hard. It still scales off of AP, so whatever. General Champion Changes. Champions with dash abilities will no longer be able to activate them while taunted. Jax's Leap Strike, Katarina's Shumpo, Shen's Shadow Dash, you know, stuff like that. Champions that waste basic attacks or abilities on damage nullifying shields or absorption of uh, champions that waste basic attacks or abilities on damage nullifying shields or absorption shields without breaking the shields, aka Kale's in a, you know intervention, Poppy's di uh, diplomatic immunity, Morgana's black shield barrier, stuff like that, will now properly grant 
or will now properly grant the uh, will now properly granted assist if the champion dies within the appropriate time frame. I know I've had that problem a lot where, you know, I'll be doing damage to Poppy or something like that, just minor damage because she's running through my defile or whatever, but she's immune or she's getting hit from my AoE, whatever it may be, and then she dies but I don't get the assist. That hurt, glad they fixed that. Items. Magic resist items. Summary. With a new magic resist uh with new magic resistance items uh, let's try that again. A new magic resist a new magic resistance item has been added to the game for in the form of a mid level MR item that builds into Spirit Visage and Banshee's Veil. We wanted to reposition magic resistance as a personal stat as opposed to an aura focused stat. See below for our Runic Bulwark updates. These changes will specifically wanted with these changes we specifically wanted to create more itemization against or options against opponent against sustained magic damage dealers in the mid game as we create more options for tanks versus late game poke teams. New item Spectre or yeah, Spectre's Kel. Recipe is Ruby Crystal plus Negatron Cloak plus 250 gold, total of 1400 gold. It gives you 200 health, 45 magic resist, and unique passive. Grants 15 health per 5 for up to 10 seconds after taking damage from an enemy champion. So, that's nice. Spirit Visage. Recipe changed. Spectre. Tears Cowl plus Kindle Gem plus 375 gold. Total is uh, 2625 gold uh, from 220. Health increased to 400 from 200. Magic Resist increased to 550 or 55 from 45. Now additionally grants 20 health per 5 seconds. Again, they're just, you know, they want to make mid tier items so that there's more, you know, optimization for other people to go instead of just like. Okay, you're gonna get a spear visage. You're gonna go and get this. Gonna get this. Gonna get that. Gonna get this. As far as just magic resist goes, and let's be honest here, you needed the negatron cloak to get a banshee's veil or to get a spirit visage. So glad they added you know something else that will actually allow them to still get a benefit from having a made item, but you know it's not oh my god overpowered. You know banshee's veil. Recipe change to Spectre's Cowl plus Ruby Crystal plus 875 gold. Total is 2750 gold, up from 2520. Health increased to 450 from 400. Magic uh, resist increased to 55 from 45. Mana reduced to 0 from 30, because you no longer need that Catalyst the Protector for it. And added unique passive. Additional unique passive, rather. Grants plus 45 health per second for up to 10 seconds after taking damage from an enemy champion or when the spell shield breaks. So, whichever one comes first, that's amazing. You know, it's not going to be... I feel people are going to say, oh, it's too overpowered! And then they'll think of a way to counteract that, and thus it's no longer OP. Glad they changed that. Runic Ain- er, Guardian Angel. Recipe changed. Negatron Cloak plus Chain Vest plus 1310 gold for a total of 2750 gold up from 2600. And the Magic Resist has been increased to 40 from 30. So, overall, 10 more Magic Resist for getting the Negatron Cloak and what you built out of a Null- er, yeah, Null Magic Mantle, I believe the name of it is, and the Chain Vest, so, eh. Whatever. I can't wait you know, to see people say, Oh, the new Guardian Angel sucks when it's going to be the same thing. <laughs> I guarantee you people are going to say, Oh, this sucks. Moving on. Runic Bulwark and Locket of Iron Solari. Runic Bulwark has been removed from the game. Aegis of the Legion now builds into Locket of the Iron Solari. Context. We wanted to reduce the burden of buying an Aegis slash Bulwark every game by combining Aegis and Locket, we can more clearly push them into their strategic uh, niches of teamfight areas, 
or in team fight area effect damage reduction items. Aegis of the Legion, or Aegis of the Legion, however you want to pronounce it. Combined cost reduced to 375 gold from 625. Total cost reduced to 1900 gold from 2150. Health reduced to 200 from 250. No longer grants self only magic resist. Unique Aura, or Unique Aura Legion. No longer grants armor. Magic resist increased to 50, or to 220 from 15. No longer grants additional bonuses to minions. So, again, what we just read right here, you no longer get the extra magic resist for yourself. And it no longer gives you armor. So, okay. Whatever. It's going to be in Lock of the Iron Slurry, I believe. Runic Bulwark, removed from the game. Lock of the Iron Slurry. New path build. Aegis of the Legion, plus 600 gold for a total of 2,500 gold. Now gives you 300 health, plus 20 armor, plus 10% cooldown reduction. Unique active retained. And now grants unique active aura legion. Or unique aura legion. So you're getting this aura right here. But it's going to be on Lock of the Iron Slurry. Lock of the Iron Slurry is still going to have its pet or its active. But it's also getting the 10% cooldown reduction that you get from Aegis. You're getting a little extra health. And just overall, you know, that's one less item your team has to worry about. So... Hopefully you can see jungles not go straight for Lock of the Iron Slurry and go for something else. Because I'll tell you this, after my boots, whenever I was jungling, I always, always, always got an Aegis of the Legion to take that burden off of my support. But let's keep on going. Blade of the Rune King. Active haste slash slow duration reduced to 3 seconds from 4. Alright, I know a lot of people on the forums are crying about that. Glad Riot did something to shut them up. Warden's Mail. Passive slow reduced to 1 second from 1.5 and, and cost reduced to 1,000 from 1,100. So, overall, right there, Warden's Mail is now a little less obnoxious, but still as obnoxious. Randwin's Omen. Passive slow duration reduced to 1 second from 1.5 and, and cost reduced to... 3,000 from 3,100 combined cost is unchanged. Really, the 100 gold difference is coming from Warren's Mail because you needed a Warren's Mail to get Randuin's Omen. So, hey, glad that, you know, glad people can still build Randuin's without it taking an extra 100 gold. Frozen Heart. Cost reduced to 2,900 from 3,000. Combined cost unchanged. I have no idea why... You know, it's now 100 gold less, but eh, whatever. <laughs> to me, it doesn't make that big of a difference. It wasn't one of the items I got as a standard item anyway. New icons. The following items have been, or have received new icons. Abyssal Scepter, Catalyst the Protector, Deathfire Grasp, Glacial Shroud, Haunting Goose, or Geis, Hextech Revolver, Thornmail, and Vampiric Scepter. Maps. Summoner's Rift, Jungle Monsters. Summary: All camps outside of the buff champion, or er, all camps outside of buff champ, or er, camps, will now spawn later in the game. Some experience has been moved back from the ancient golem and the lizard elder to their young lizard spawn, meaning junglers will have to fully clear the camp in order to hit level two, and not just kill the buff monster. Context: Our first jungle modification in 3.8. Or, yeah, our first jungle modifications in 3.8 were not quite enough to intact the changes we wanted. So we're pushing the spawn timers even further to finish the job while fixing some other un unintended side effects. Junglers could completely cripple their enemy team counterparts, especially early on, without fully committing to confronting by smiting the buff and escaping. Or killing the opponent while the immediate or immediate level advantage or or killing the opponent with the immediate level advantage rather we like the importance of aggressive early game invades but we wanted to make sure there's an appropriate amount of risk involved so wraith spawn time 
has been increased to 2 minutes 5 seconds from a minute 55. Wolf spawn. The spawn time has been increased to 2 minutes 5 seconds from 1 minute 55. And giant wolf base uh, experience granted from one is increased to 170 from 153. Golems. Now spawn at 205 instead of 155. The big golem. Base experience increased to 160 from 137. Ancient Golem. Base experience reduced to 260 from 340. Base health reduced to 1400 from 1500. El Lizard Elder. Base experience granted reduced to 260 from 340. Base health reduced to 1400 from 1500. And the Young Lizards. Base experience now. or base experience granted increased to 50 from 10. And base health increased to 400 from 300. Meaning, again, the you know the outer jungle camps that you generally go for, you know, like again the golems that are either at top or bottom depending on which team you're on, the wraiths that are right by the middle, and the wolves that are either you know in between your top and uh, middle where your bottom and middle, depending on again which side of the map you're on, they now spawn slightly delayed, giving you enough time to go ahead get your blue, get your red. And then go hit up those jungle camps immediately when they spawn. So I'm glad they changed that as well as, hey, it's now not a huge deal if you get Smite stolen at level 1. Yes, it's still a big deal, but they still have to get, you know, your other two lizards that are around your buff. So that way they can hit that level 2. And, you know, it, it just makes that whole lot easier. As far as the health reductions go... Meh, whatever. Giving the health to the young lizards, not a huge deal for me. Baron Nashar. Summary. Baron Nashar now takes less physical and magical damage... Er, uh, uh, Baron Nashar now takes less physical and magical damage from targets affected by uh, Ferocious Corrosion, the single target deb uh, debuff he applies to whomever he, uh, who, whomever's tanking him as opposed to directly reducing attack damage. Context. So long Baron with sustained magic damage was too easy for a select or for a select few champions. This change makes them or makes things more consistent overall. A noted side effect is that the team who starts fighting Baron Nashar will now be at less of a disadvantage when engaging upon when engaged upon by the enemy team due to the fact that versus, uh, versus, er, yeah, Verocious Corrosion no longer alters overall attack damage and instead only reduces direct damage at Baron Nashar. We'll continue to monitor this act, this and act if it seems to be a significant problem. Verocious Corrosion no longer reduces the target's attack damage by half and no long, er, now reduces physical and magic damage to the target, or er, uh, now reduces the physical and magic damage the target deals to Baron Nashar by 50%. Again, you know, it was a big, big deal if your team just got, you know, was just about to kill Baron and got smite stolen and your, you know, the team got initiated on, and oh look, your Singe or whoever was tanking him or if you guys were bouncing him back and forth between two or three people, this now makes it so that way they, you still do that 100% damage to champions. Again, not counting in magic resist, armor, stuff like that. But you now still do the damage you did previously to champions. You just still do less damage to Baron. Great. He's still going to be a new magnet either way. Turrets. Summary, turrets are now harder to push down within the very early stages of the game. We've also corrected a minor bug that gave purple side inner turrets slightly more armor than intended. Context. Due to high global value of map objectives and the ease of taking down turrets in the early game, we, with sent, er, certain compositions, players in particularly in competitive play have been entirely bypassing the laning phase Ultimately, we didn't want to give, or we didn't want the, we didn't want to completely eliminate this strategy, but its prevalence was invalidating many champions who gave, 
or who have high potential during the leaning phase. These changes should introduce more risky in, into aggressive or should introduce more risky into aggressive early game objective focuses or focused strategies without eliminating its viability completely. For added context, while the number might initially seem high, partic in particularly the purple side inner turrets have 10 more armor than intended, turrets begin with the same armor or with the uh, turrets begin the game with much more armor than relative to champions, so these changes are not as significant as they might first seem. Outer turrets now gain 60 bonus armor at the start of the game, which starts decaying after 4 minutes have been passed and finishes decaying after 4 minutes, or and finishes decaying 4 minutes later. So meaning, by 8 minutes into the game, the turrets take the same amount of damage they did previously, it's just before that 8 minute mark, they take less damage. Outer tower, or outer turret base armor increased to 60 from 54. Outer turrets no longer gain passive, or outer turrets no longer gain armor for over the first 8 minutes of the game. And fix a bug where the purple side's inner turret had 10 more armor than intended. Again, early game the turrets are harder to take down. Mid and late game, they're the same. Not a huge deal. And hopefully this will make it, you know, not, you know, swear somebody like myself who plays very, very, very aggressive can't take that first tower out, you know, the first five to eight minutes. You know, obviously it's still going to happen, but hopefully not as often. Twisted Tree Line and Crystal Scar. General changes. Summary. Needlessly large Rod and Deathfire Grasp have been removed from the map modes with more mid-level AP items added in, including Landry's Torment, Seeker's Arm Guard, and Moonfire or Moonflare Spellblade, a mid-tier defensive AP item. Blackfire Torch now has the same active ability as Deathfire Grasp. Context: The small-scale AP reworks is intended, or er, rework is intended to address AP survivability and viability in Twisted Tree Line and Crystal Scar. Needlessly large rod and, by extension, Deathfire Grasp have been removed because it was unreasonably difficult to save up uh, for on these maps. And the addition of Moon, uh, uh, the addition of Moonflare Blade, uh, Spell Blade. And Seeker's Arm Guard should help with early to mid game survivability. So, again, needlessly large rod been removed, Deathfire Grasp been removed, Landry's Torment been removed, as well or er, Landry's Torment been enabled, and Seeker's Arm Guard has been enabled. I don't know if that's going to allow them to go ahead and build, you know, because I'm going to have to assume that you can't get a Zanya's with that Seeker's Arm Guard. I just have to assume that because. That requires the needlessly large rod. We'll have to see though. Returning item Moonflare Spellblade. Ranged only. Recipe Seeker's Arm Guard plus Negatron Cloak plus 420 gold for a total of 2300 gold. Gives you 50 AP, 50 armor, 50 magic resist, and unique passive. Tenacity reduces the stun. Or reduces the duration of stun, slows, taunts, fear, silences, blinds, and mobilizations by 35%. Blackfire Torch. Reworked it only needs Blasting Wand, Fiendish Codex, and 720 gold for a total of 240 gold. Or 2,400 gold, rather. Gives you 80 AP plus 10% cooldown reduction. Unique Active. Deals 20% of, of the target champion's maximum health and magic damage over 6 seconds and increases all subsequent magic damage taken by the target by 20% on a 60 second cooldown. So again, it's the exact same thing that Deathfire Grasp does. And Wooglet's Witch Cap, new build, Seeker's Arm Guard plus Blasting Wand plus Amplifying Tome plus 10, er, 1045 gold for a total of 3500 gold. Armor increased to 45 from 40. Bug fixes. 
Vile Mon now properly selects his melee attack for melee champions with more than 100 range. And Vile Mon no longer twitches when players leave his lair. Lesser Wraith health now properly scales with time. Alright. I never played on Twisted Tree Line, so it doesn't affect me. And I don't know if it affects any pros either. Or most of you guys for that fact as well. General. Champion search tags. Now champion... Or, summary. Now champion search tags more accurately represent the team role each champion plays and better explains the recommended playstyle for that for a particular champion to new players. In the future, we... Uh, in future releases, we will continue to refine these tags and how they appear in pvp.net. For more information on our changes, read here. I'll put the descript or I'll put the link in the description down below. Champion or yeah, champions will now be tagged with a single primary role as uh, for the following: assassin, fighter, mage, marksman, support, and tank. You'll see these changes across pvp.net. Alright, ready check, summary, in order to get players into games faster, uh, in order to get players into games faster, those, those that habitually fail to accept match games will be temporarily, temporarily removed from the queue. This should help players with longer queue times in addition to removing from single, or from fringe abuse cases. Players that Frequently fail a ready check will be given timeouts from re-entering the queue to prevent them from lengthening the queue times for other players. Normal play patterns, including missing a ready check every once in a while, would not trigger this penalty. So meaning, say, all right, let's say you play 10, 20 games a night. If you miss one of those ready checks, you're not going to, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to do anything to you. It's only if you miss, you know, six, seven, eight of them in a row that you'll start getting that, you know, the timeout and you'll have to wait. In chat, fix the bug where the slash mute command did not work. Thank you! Fix the bug where you could not use the slash mute at champion name command unless the target was on your friends list. Thank you! I can't tell you how many times I've been playing a game and had to mute somebody, but it never let me mute them because the command was broken. So thank you for that. Thank you, Riot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But uh, yeah, guys, that is it. My name has been Charles Wilm, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the patch notes. Sorry for my stuttering, stuff like that. But hey, as always, I will talk to you all next time.